Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lab of EC270 Embedded Logic Design. In this lab, we are focusing on the problem of the GCD calculation. Uh, we discussed about the algorithm about the for the GCD calculation. We discussed the uh, approaches using the while loop, for loop, and using the uh, uh, the unstructured uh, way of writing the sequential circuit. We discuss the problems with those approaches, and then we discuss about the uh, uh, data path and the controller unit, and how you can implement any sequential circuit or any algorithm using this approach. So now we are going to apply this concept in our GCD calculation example. So to implement any digital circuit using the data path and controller approach, you need to follow a very simple set of tools. And using this set of tools, you will be able to implement any circuit, any digital circuit using the, uh, uh, the very log code without facing any issues on the hardware as well as the dynamic ref or any dynamic range of the input. Okay, so uh, the first thing is that you need to be aware about the what algorithms you are going to implement. For example, for the GCD, we have already discussed that this is the algorithm uh, we would like to implement. And then this algorithm, what we do, we compare the larger number with the smaller number, we subtract the larger number from the smaller number and replace the larger number with the difference between the two. And we continue this step until the both the numbers are equal. So in this case, you, you, what you need to do, you need to first have, you need to define a register. Register is that uh, set of flip-flop which store the multi-bit values, okay? So you need to define the register for every input and output of your algorithm. For example, you can see that I have the register for my input X, Y, and I have the register for the output GCD. So you need to define the register. Then this register will have the uh, this register will have the three signals. One is the clear, one is the clock, and one is the lower signal. So again, what is the register? Register is nothing but the so this is the register. Suppose it is storing the value x, and x is the seven bit one. It is nothing but the seven flip flops which are there to store the data. Now to store the data inside the flip-flop, what we need? We need a clock signal because flip-flop is a sequential circuit. We need a load signal so that whenever the load is equal to one, data will be stored inside the flip-flop. And whenever the load is equal to zero, the previous data will be written inside the flip-flop. So what we have, we have clear clock and the load input. So when clear is high, the output of the register will be predetermined initial value, say all zero. If the load is high, then on the next clock edge, the input value will be loaded inside the register and else your uh, in the rest of the condition, the value which is stored inside the register will be available at the output. So these are the three registers for the X and Y input and one for the output with the corresponding clock clear and the load signal XLD, YLD and ZLD. So when the XLD is equal to one on the next clock edge, your x1 value which is present at the input is passed inside the x range. And uh, similarly, when the clear is equal to one, uh, x range will be initialized to the known value, say zero. So then you need to find out what are the arithmetic and uh, logical operations are happening in your algorithm. For example, here I'm doing this operation where I'm comparing the two numbers. Then I'm seeing whether the one number is less than another number then I'm doing the subtraction operations. So all these are my arithmetic and logical operations. So I need to identify what are the arithmetic and logical operations. Then I need to connect the output of the registers which are used for the input to the appropriate arithmetic and logical operation because we are performing the arithmetic and logical operations on the input. So you connect them. For example, what I'm going to do, I'm going to compare whether X is less than or equal to Y. So this is I'm going to use. I'm going to come and this is my X, and this is my Y, and this is my X here. So I'm going to compare whether X is not equal to Y. Here I'm going to subtract uh, X minus Y. Here I'm going to subtract Y minus X. So all the operations which are being used my arithmetic circuit, I'm going to draw the 
corresponding architecture. Okay, so then connect the output of the arithmetic and logical operator to the uh, appropriate register uh, registers and use the multiplexer so that you you need you can perform the storage operation. For example, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the subtraction and replace the output of the subtraction with the corresponding value. So you can see that when I'm going to do the y minus x, I'm, I'm in, I need to replace the current y value with the new, uh, 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 the difference between the two. So output of the subtractor, I pass it to the multiplexer and they based upon this select signal, I'll load that value inside the registers register so what i'm going to do uh, i am going to do the subtraction and in in that subtraction value i'm going to replace with the new y value and that new y value i can use it same thing will happen here now the question is who will decide what will be the value of y m select who will decide what will be the value of x m select who will decide what will be the value of x load y load who will decide so this will be decided by the control unit. So controller is the one who will generate the control signal for the data path. Data path is a dumb unit. It just performs some task. But at what time, whether which task to be performed is determined by the control unit. And how the control unit is will be decided. Control unit will decide based upon the status signal. It will take the output of this comparator and it will check whether they both are equal or not. If both are equal, then your uh, uh, your uh, out, uh, your algorithm should stop. If both are not equal, then it will check the values of this, then decide whether I need to uh, perform the uh, y minus x or x minus a y, and then I need to load whether the new value of y or new value of y. So everything will be decided by the control unit. Okay. So now the thing you need to do in the lab is that write a very long code for the uh, data path. Okay, so you can see that I have defined the values for the all the inputs and outputs of the data path. And then you in the lab, you will do the code writing for the data path. So I'm not going to explain these codes here. Uh, this will be discussed during the lab hours. So what my GCD looks like. My GCD, this is my uh, top file in the GCD. Then in the GCD, I have the uh, controller. I have the data path, then the, the signals will be traveled between this. The inputs will be X in and Y in will be the input to the top file and I will get the GCD as a output, okay? So we discuss about the data path in unit, okay? Now you need to write a code for the different units in the data path, which you already know. So as I told you, the data path is the one who performs the operation on the data. Well, control path is the one who will uh, decide at what time, what operation to be performed. For example, uh, in the beginning, when the go signal is one, my data X in and Y in will be loaded inside the data path. For example, in this case, um, when the go signal is equal to one, this value and this value will be stored inside the data path how this will happen in this case the control signal controller will make this is equal to one and this is equal to one so this will be passed here and this will be passed here then it will make x load is equal to one and y load is equal to one so this will be stored here and this guy will be stored here so in the beginning when the go is equal to one these values will be copied here then then what will happen then in the uh, your uh, control path, once the values are stored here, then you will get the these values are automatically available here and here, and you will get the uh, you will perform the subtraction and you will get the output of the comparator. If uh, if the x is equal to y, what will happen? Your algorithm already done with the GCD calculation. So what the controller will do? It will make the GLD is equal to one, and the x value will be passed to the output, and that's it. If the x is not equal to y, then it will compare whether the x is less than y or x is greater than y. So assume that the x is less than y. So what will happen in this case? y is equal to y minus x. So what will happen? This, uh, there will be no change here. Okay, it will remain the same. But here, this y minus x value will be loaded inside this one. So this will be made one, 
yld will made one and this y will be replaced by the y minus x and this will continue so on. So this control unit will take the status signal that is equal flag lower than equal flag and generate the control signals for the multiplexers and the register inside the data path. And as I discussed, it will be implemented using the FSM. So how it will be implemented? You start with the FSM with the start path. You wait for the go signal. If the go signal is not one, you, you are in the start. You have not received the new data. Once you are in the go signal, you go to the next stage, which is the input stage. What you do inside the input stage? You copy the data inside the your register. So what you are going to do when you are in the input stage, you are going to make the XML is equal to one, uh, XM select is equal to one, YM select is equal to one, XLD is equal to one, YLD is equal to one, and the data will be copied here. So this data will be copied here in the input stage. So you have captured the data, okay? Then what you are going to do, you are going to test the data. If X is equal to Y, X is equal to Y, then your GCD calculation is done and you can exit it. So you are going to test the data. How you are going to test the data? You are going to compare this flag from the data part. If this flag is equal to one, then you are done. You will output the value and you will, uh, you will uh, complete the loop, okay? But if the this flag is not equal to one, that means X is not equal to Y, then you are going to check this LT flag, okay? So you are going to X is not equal to five, you will go to the next stage. You are going to compare the uh, flag. Then you are going to check whether the X is less than Y. If X is less than Y, you are going to do Y is equal to Y minus X. And this you are going to do X is equal to X minus Y. And you are going to update the Y. So what you are going to do, you are, if suppose that the X is greater than Y, so you, are, you need to perform X is equal to X minus Y. So what you are going to do, you are going to make this as a zero, this one as zero because you don't need to change Y, but you are going to make the XM select as zero and XLD as one. So the X is equal to X minus Y will be copied here. Okay, so this is how you can implement the uh, GCD in your, uh, in your uh, lab and you can test it using the uh, corresponding test bench, okay? And the same concept as a homework, you can try it uh, as a self-study, you can try it at, uh, for the square root algorithm. So you can also do design the data path as well as control path for the calculation of the square. Again, this is the self-study. You can look at the online resources available and then you can prepare yourself. But this is not a weekly homework, this is just a self-study path.